The Rocky Mountain Arsenal National Wildlife Refuge is a 15,000 acre tract of land that's located pretty close to downtown Denver. And this area has a bunch of hiking trails and a wildlife drive that you can take through the middle of the property. They have a herd of bison that are located there as part of the conservation efforts. They have quite a lot of prairie dogs and we were kind of surprised to see so much prairie land when we were expecting it to be really mountainous. Soft. Yeah. It's kind of scraggly. There's a captive breeding program for the black footed ferret on the property, and these ferrets. As it was explained by the man at the visitor center, are very aggressive and they go down into the burrows of the prairie dogs and actually hunt the prairie dogs. So it's kind of bringing back a balance to the ecosystem. What is it? Oh, the prairie dog sound. Yeah. Starting in the 40s, this land was used for the production of munitions to serve the war. And that continued through the Cold War and into the Vietnam War. It wasn't until the early 80s when the decision was made to clean up the property and turn it into a national wildlife refuge so that it could return to the original prairie land. I'm going to check out the killer black-footed ferrets. Prairie dogs? Do you see any? He said they might not be out. They're uh, nocturnal. We just went into the visitor center at the Rocky Mountain Arsenal Wildlife Refuge and the uh, guy at the information desk was super, super nice and helpful. He like pulled out a map of Colorado and started telling us all the best points to like drive all around to see. So um, I think it kind of changed our plan a little bit and he said that he actually volunteers at Rocky Mountain National Park uh, in the beginning of the week and apparently that's like the third most crowded national park in the US. So he said that the weekend is not the greatest time to go there because there's like 10,000 people a day who go to like the Bear Lake area to hike and camp. So now we're kind of not sure what we're gonna do because we don't like being in the national park when it's super crowded. We've tried that before in Zion and mm -hmm. Yosemite and it's not fun, but um, I don't pretty, know. You're pretty much wasting your time because there's just everybody's in front of you. Yeah. It could be the most awesome thing to look at, but. You're there with like 800 other people and it kind of ruins it but I don't know we might still be able to just go to the ranger station and then get a backcountry permit and like get away from the crowds yeah. so we got to think about that but right now we're going around the wildlife drive to see these uh, prairie dogs and hopefully a buffalo yeah. so we go uh, left wildlife drive no booze no booze <laughs> I'll put it away <laughs> How many deer get hit? I was just thinking that if people are going too fast, they probably run over the prairie dogs. <laughs> We stopped off to get some coffee and really good donuts on our way across Denver. And then we headed to Golden and we're finally going up into the mountains. We probably should have left a little bit earlier because by the time we were starting the windy drive, it was getting dark. And we never really like to get to a campground at night because it's just a lot more difficult to orient yourself 
And especially here, you have to stop at the entrance station if you're coming in later and the ranger station is closed so that you can pay the entrance fee and get your tag before you go into the actual campground. $7 for the daily park pass, which isn't included in the campground fee. It won't go in. Too many of them? Oh, wait, there we go. Okay, you it's good. in. All right, let's go find our campgrounds. It's getting dark. We were really lucky to be able to get a reservation at one of the last tent only campsites, especially because it was a Friday night and I had just booked this about two days before. This is why I think I like uh, state campgrounds better than national for this place. There's an ice machine, washer and dryer, and a sink with hot water. It's like a resort. <laughs> so, all right. The latest problem that we're having is that the dromedary bag had some mildew in it, so we can't use that to fill it up with water. I used the really nice sink and hot water to clean out the dromedary bag, which I would have done when we were home if I had done a better job of packing for this trip, but we know it was a last minute thing, so I did the best that I could. So once I had the water that I needed to cook, we headed back to the campsite and started a fire. And I have to say this was not one of the quieter campgrounds. There were a ton of families and a ton of kids, lots and lots of noise. When the sun came up, we finally got to look around at the area surrounding our campsite. We were right next to the road. You can see the cars over here and the bathroom is right behind that. So it's kind of nice to be close to the bathroom. When I woke up, there was actually somebody who had plugged their coffee pot into the electric outlet in the bathroom and was making coffee. Our, our tent set up. Definitely not the most private campsite, but it worked for the night. Oh yeah, oh, I'm a fan. Because the cars are right there. But it was good for a, a quick stop. Should have just showed everybody to make it seem like we're in the middle. Like we're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and the parking lot and bathroom is five steps away. And ice. Oh yeah, they have ice machines. <laughs> it's about uh, 11. 40 California time right now and we just packed up the campsite and um, we're gonna go see if we can get a backcountry site tonight it's kind of a gamble tonight's Saturday night so it's the hardest night to get a campsite and um, I mean for as busy as this place was last night it cleared out super fast this morning there were all these families and millions of kids so we're hoping that the backcountry sites will give us a better chance and we decided that it's probably not the greatest thing to go up to Rocky Mountain tonight because um, again, it's just going to be crazy on a Saturday, so we're going to keep our fingers crossed and hope we can get a backcountry site here at uh, Golden Gate State Park. There's any open sites. When we got to the visitor center and looked at the backcountry sites, we figured out that they have a shelter that is very similar to the Appalachian Trail shelters. So we decided to go with that because Patrick's never stayed in one. All right. We're all set. Ready? Charger for this. It's the orange one. Yeah. You see it? No. 